This is Tracy Smith and Claudia Dirk from The Cider Junction in San Jose, California. We are a bistro and bottle shop, and you are listening to Cider Chat. Episode number 107. Hello and welcome to Cider Chat. My name is Rhea Wincoller and I am the producer and cider MC of this weekly podcast where we speak with makers, enthusiasts, and folks within the cider trade from around the world. And this week we are in the Valley of Hearts Delight. Where's that? Well, it's actually in San Jose, California. Who knew, right? We're going to hear about that in the new Cider Junction, which is a cider bar opened by Claudia Derp and Tracy Smith. There's going to be so much more on that in just a moment. If you are a new listener to Cider Chat, welcome. This weekly podcast is, well, now in its second year and running. And the first part of the show, I kind of catch folks up on the news around Ciderville around the world. And then about oh, 10 minutes in or so, you could always scroll forward to the main chat, which again will be on the Cider Junction in San Jose, California. If you are a regular listener, welcome back. And for all of you out there in Ciderville, I want you to know that Cider Chat is now on Spotify. So if you are subscribed to Spotify, you could do that free free download type of app thing for your phone. It's really good for folks who have it on Android. That's the way you're listening here. Uh, Cider Chat is now live there, so that's great. Then the other thing you should know is that there is a Cider Chat YouTube channel. And via that channel, I have now posted three episodes, primarily so that you could follow the closed caption on the YouTube site when you're trying to take notes. I thought that would help. It's as close to a transcript that I could do right now, except for the Neil Worley chat on Keeving. That is a transcript that's available for patrons of Cider Chat. Uh, But right now, there's also the Tom Oliver episode that went live just a a week or so ago, where he was talking about making Perry. And then the Chad Cook episode with Cider Hill Sellers. He got really geeky, gave lots of cider making techniques. And then there's also a Chuck Shelton from Albemarle Cider Works in Virginia. Chuck is just, he's just a lovely being, a fantastic cider maker. Uh, that's a family farm down there, a family orchard, a lot of heritage apples, and well known for their single variety ciders. And he he just had a delightful chat, so you might want to check that out too. Uh, it's a full episodes on YouTube, and again, you could just scroll forward if you want to just listen to the chat and get some of the particulars that they're talking about. So I'll be doing that from time to time as different episodes come live, and you could also subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Cider Chat. Uh, if I don't get to it a little bit, I might just be putting it up there. In fact, I'm going to be putting something up there for all of you around the beginning of the new year as a little holiday gift from me to you. So stay tuned for that. For the next couple weeks, you're going to hear me talking about the New York International Beer Competition. And tomorrow I'll be speaking to the founder. So we'll be having a follow-up actual chat on this. And there's a couple of reasons why I'm highlighting this particular competition. One is that, well, Adam who I'll be talking to tomorrow, who is also known as the alcohol professor, uh, came forward and asked if he could sponsor the the competition on Cider Chat. And I said yes, because I am always looking for ways to get the word out about different things and certainly bring on sponsors as I can. But also, I don't just take any sponsor. There's a, a reason why I want to get involved with a certain company or business, because I think there's an interesting story there. And I think there is right here, and I'm, I'm, we're digging into it together. Uh, competitions are a big thing for all libations, and certainly for cider right now. And one of the things I see is that there is a lack of cider judges who have had the breadth of experience of being able to 
have ciders, not just from one region, but globally. I think that really informs you. So the neat thing about this particular competition is that the judges are both distributors, buyers, people in the trade. Now, I'm not saying cider makers at all. And they are judging the ciders based on price point and the category. And recently, just this year, they are now incorporating the United States Association of Cider Makers new categories that they have set forth for cider. And we're going to be talking about how does that also impact international ciders who don't necessarily follow the same category script that the the U.S. Association does. So we'll follow up on that. But the, the interesting thing is the the judges. So bear that in mind. And this is an opportunity then for new cideries, makers who want to get their product out to the actual buyers and getting that global end on it. And so there's no surprise that I see that Reverend Nat has won an award in the past because you see how Reverend Nat's uh, hard ciders that's based out in Portland, Oregon. I had actually Nat West on the podcast. Uh, Let me get the link for that. Episode 30. And you're seeing that those ciders uh, from Nat West, his company going now out to Japan and having a more global expansion of sorts. And of course, he's upping his game too for his business. So if this is something that you want to do, if you want to look outside of your local territory and really expand, this is a good idea. Some of the other ciders that have won awards, so we had the classic large cider makers in the U.S., uh, we all know them. But there's also Citizen Cider up in Vermont. Then we have the Gypsy Circus Cider Company. And if that is familiar to you on Cider Chat, that's because we had Stephanie and Aaron on the podcast talking about both their their cidery based in Tennessee and how they put on the Gypsy Circus event in Colorado. Uh, gave away two sets of tickets last year. So they put in a couple ciders, and they've been winning some awards too. And then a little uh, international, we have uh, Adams County Cider from Ireland. We also have uh, Weston Cider Company. That's a U.K. cider maker. And again, sure, there's a big, large corporate cider cideries. Uh, another smaller one is Common Cider, based in Sparks, New York, who won for the Hibiscus Saison kind of like a twist, right, of cider and beer. What I've been following along with with competitions and just kind of noting um, in my non-statistical way is that there is, appears to be a little bit of a science to it on, on entering. And the thing that has to happen is you have to enter in order to get the info back. You know, you typically get notes from judges and you get connections this way. It's the best way to get your cider out to a more global audience. Uh, certainly a lot of competitions are focused on consumer judges or peer judging, but this is a little bit different. This is from the buyer perspective for distribution. And I think that that is really something to be said about that. So we'll be following up with Adam and checking in on if he's going to actually uh, expand the name, because not only do they accept beers, of course, they're accepting ciders. They're calling it the beer competition, the New York International Beer Competition. But there are these other two categories of cider and mead. So what will take place there? So I'm looking forward to that when I get to ask him more direct questions and see what he has to say. In the meanwhile, if you want to find out about this competition, you could go to the show notes for this episode here, number 107, or Google New York International Beer Competition, and there's an easy-to-use download form right there. CiderCon is coming up in January of 2018 at the end of the month there and going on to February 2nd. This is going to take place in Baltimore, Maryland, and it is the annual conference for the United States Association of Cider Makers. So if you haven't registered and you're in the trade, you, you definitely want to try to get to go there. I know it could be tough, but you definitely want to try to get to go there uh, any way you can because it is such an amazing burst of energy and what a resource of information, which leads me to this tip of the week for CiderCon. Download the program now. And what I mean by that, the program of events and schedules, the workshops are going to be taking place on Thursday and Friday and start familiarizing yourself with what is going to be offered. 
because there is that much and it takes a bit to absorb it in and think, okay, how best can I use my time during that short window when there's going to be so much fun and yet I could really use this time to up the ante for my own skills. So take a look at that. Download the program this week. There'll be a link to CiderCon in the show notes, or you could just Google CiderCon and find out the inf- information there and see what they're doing. Even if you're not going to the conference, I think it'll be very informative to give you a sense of the market, uh, what the association is looking at in terms of presentations, and to get a sense of the wealth of knowledge that is currently in Ciderville and how that's growing. Again, that's CiderCon in 2018. It's going to be happening at the end of the month in January, going to the 2nd of February. It's not February yet, but I am already California dreaming, specifically of the city of San Jose, California where I had the privilege of being able to visit the Cider Junction and meet the publicans and owners, Claudia Derp and Tracy Smith. Now, true confessions here. I have flown in and out of San Jose International Airport many times, but I always beeline it out of the city and head to the beach. But this time, due to circumstances surrounding a family wedding and the fact that it was taking place in San Jose, well, I saw the opportunity to go and visit the Cider Junction only a month or less than a month after it had opened. And I am super duper pleasantly surprised. I I see San Jose in an absolutely different light now. And there's no doubt about it. The fact that there's a cider bar there really has changed everything for me, but it's a little bit more of that. Both Claudia and Tracy gave me a glimpse into San Jose and the people there and really gave me appreciation of the attraction. And they'll tell you more about it. So why don't we not hesitate any further and enter into this conversation? You notice that we go straight into talking about the ciders we're drinking because These two gals, they are true publicans, and that's a rare breed indeed. People who could really invite you into their pub and make you feel like you're on top of the world. They are hosts at an extraordinary level. And there are publicans that I've met throughout my time of being in the libations world who really stand out. And I want to say that both Claudia and Tracy are one of them. So without further ado, let's you and I grab a glass and join this chat with Claudia Derp and Tracy Smith of the Cider Junction in San Jose, California. So I, I was given the... the you, you, you have the, the Gravacine and I have the 1876. And wow, that is delicious. Do you taste that already? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are they back um, sweetening that? So with this one, so if they do back sweeten, remember with the majority of the cider makers that we're carrying, they're using the fresh pressed apple juice that they have mm-hmm. on reserve. Um, and then they're using honey or agave or any fruit. Um, but for them, because they're using heirloom apples and only heirloom apples, um, they're not back sweetening a whole lot um, with their apples because they don't need to. Um, the way that they're, they're, the Gowan family is more artisanal. So they have a hundred year old plus orchard that they're pulling from, plus the whole um, upper Mendocino County area mm-hmm. that they're getting uh, stuff from. So when they do it, they're a little bit more meticulous with their cider making. So they're aging it really well. Um, they mm-hmm. have certain varietals that they blend together in their heirlooms. Mm. Um, wow. And so it, it gives a nice mm. flavor profile. It's a very, very traditional yeah, cider. Right. Yeah, um, that is a real with traditional those, cider. With those heirloom apples. And you yeah. can taste the difference wow. with their cider. Even when you try other ciders, of course. 
Um, and even if they're just an original or just a traditional, just apple cider, no other fruits added, mm-hmm. you can really taste the difference between theirs and someone else's. So yeah. it's a little bit more cultivated. It's all about the fruit. Yeah. You know, it's I all mean, about the fruit. The product yeah. is based upon the, that root there. Yeah. So exactly. it's really, really key. So you get a little bit more of the farming mm-hmm. from the, the Gravenstein's uh, clean, clean. Yeah, I want to try the Gravenstein, which is and so well and known and for this sweeter. fruit. It's so sweeter. Yeah, yep. mm-hmm. yeah I it mean, this, this is what is all over Sonoma and, and Napa. Correct? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The Gravenstein apples are really a great apple to mm. make cider out of. Yeah. It's just, they're really it's good. Hard. It's not, it's, right, it's not overly sweet. Yeah. Yes. Correct. No. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Just really well done. What a, a quenchable experience you know mm-hmm. you're there and and yet it makes you salivate a little bit more kind of encouraging like don't put down that glass <laughs> I, I love that about cider yeah that's what you know it fits your your thirst need but also your desire to keep on savoring it uh, fantastic ciders that was myself tracy derp and also you heard the nose chiming in about the gowan cider that we were drinking Next, Claudia Derp will give us a background of this area of San Jose and the patrons that are coming into the Cider Junction. The people who are coming in here, a lot of them are from here, from the community, just the Willow Glenners who live in the, the couple surrounding blocks that were just clamoring for something like this, where they, it's like a community gathering point almost, because it's further down the road is where kind of Willow Glen Main Street is. Um, and is this and area called Willow Glen? Yes. Is that So mm-hmm. there's different yeah. communities within San Jose. Yeah, correct. What is the Willow Glen area known as? It's a residential neighborhood, but it's kind of this own little community. And people who are in Willow Glen are very proud to say they're in Willow Glen. Mm. Like there's this own Facebook group, a Facebook group, just the Willow Glen neighbors. There's wow. a Willow Glen charm that's run by a realtor with 80,000 followers because people would like to live here in Willow Glen. It's a very close knit community, so a lot of people know each other. But a lot of the a lot of the residents are older residents. They've been here a very long time, and they've been here. Yeah. I mean, quite a few of them have actually come in here, and they were happy because they love cider. They remember it from like the old days, yeah. and so they would I'm come kidding. in and they would say that, and they would. And this whole area used to be oh, orchards. Yeah. It used to be cherries, it used to be apricots, apricots it used to be plums, peaches, it just used to not be... So much when apples, you say not used so much to be, apples. Well, but let's kind of put a little bit of a, a timeline here mm-hmm. on it. Um, Up well, until the 50s, 60s, 60s or 50s something? Or 60s, yeah. Yeah. This was before Silicon Valley, yeah. this was called the Valley well, of Hearts then. Delight. It was Hearts all, Delight. Yes, Valley of Hearts, Hearts Delight. Delight. This was all orchards. I mean, we have back there, you see, this was Willow Glen. It was all the orchards. pictures on the wall there. I mean, Beautiful. people, we, we literally have old timers coming and saying, it's like, oh, yes, it has changed a lot, but down to whatever the next cross street is from then on, it was all orchards. It was cherry orchards here, apricots. They had, I mean, this was the biggest food processing area at the time. In more the so than in the Imperial, US. Imperial in, Valley now in, in Southern it, Cal is known as like the big yeah, mega place. Yeah, but, but this was for this was fruit, it. for dry fruit especially, for like apricots and plums, like prunes. Yeah. This was it. This was the valley. And it was all orchards. Isn't that fascinating? Now, not apples. Apples were down in Watsonville. Like short script for explaining cider to people. It depends on what they come in and what they ask. So we we get quite a few people that come in who've already tasted ciders. So they've they've had a few travels, but not a lot. And so they see the variety that we have. So that's the one of the number one feedbacks that we get a lot is they cannot believe how many different styles of cider we have in yeah. one location. And so they'll go to this place, this place, or this place, and only be able to get one or two, or it'll be mainstream, everyday, marketable cider that they're drinking. Um, So they don't know any different. And then when they come here, they'll ask questions. Oh, my gosh. And so it's usually not even, sometimes they'll say, well, do you recommend, you know, what do you recommend? And I'll, my first question to them is, well, are you a wine drinker or are you a beer drinker? Mm. You know, do you, have you had mm-hmm. cider before? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I want to get a little bit of background from them to mm-hmm. find out, well, are you a beer drinker or are you a wine drinker? Because those make a difference. Mm-hmm. And so then I ask them, well, do you like things a little more sweet or do you like them a little dry? Right. Most ciders are fermented dry. Um, it's not until they're back sweetened with the fruit that they're trying to use um, or any sort of, you know, sizers that are made with honey and so forth. But they don't 
know that until you educate them. Mm -hmm. So it's those kinds of questions. questions. The basic yeah. answer is it's fermented apple juice and we focus on craft ciders. Yeah, and, I mean, it's and just, it sounds trivial, but we've had plenty of people come through here and say, what kind of beers do you have? Talking about the ciders, referring to cider. We even have our own bar. They'll call our, it cider beer. Uh, oh, uh, interesting. Our, yeah. Even our own bartender keeps saying, "Is like, so what beers do we have new?" And we're like, "Blaine." He's like, "Oh, ciders, ciders." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I made the mista same mistake over here. I walk in with some beers because we had just finished talking about how many taps you had, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah, it could so yes, yeah, there's around. the basic of the wow. basic. It's yeah. fermented apple juice, and what we focus on are the craft ciders. Like we really like look into like if anybody is using concentrates, then we would shy away from it. If they're using Unless there is like an absolute sugar. demand. I mean, we haven't had that yet. In most cases, we have said no, mm -hmm. sorry, but mm -hmm. if you can carry them and like if you can buy them in the supermarket, right. we will most likely not carry them here. Mm -hmm unless they have a special release. Like Angry Orchard, for example, is going in a direction where they actually make. They're, they have a side yes. piece, just yes. like Anthem and, and Wandering yeah. Angus. They all have these specialty. But like we know, created those posters up there of the Ooh, apple, yeah. like the cider making process, mm -hmm. um, so that we can just quickly point to it, or people can like look at it on their own time to just see, well, cider really is just apple juice that's yeah. fermented. and. Yeah and either blended or mm -hmm. other things are added to it. And that's the, the educational part too, like with those, especially with the yeah. beer, people are so hung up on beer, so that's one of the, like, the things that we talk about too, is that it's fermented like wine. So I will constantly tell them that and say, it's fermented, it's not brewed. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. and then the I just, and, then it's, it, and believe it or not, even those that are beer drinkers, they, they're not as educated about the beer either. So I'll, they, they kind of have this weird look on their face and I'll be like, well, remember it's boiled you know and Beer's I said boiled, it's heated yes. and boiled yeah. and I said I go mm -hmm. but ferment, fer fermented wines or apple cider mm -hmm. is not right. and then they're like oh wow and then it's just that's the educational part that we're trying to bring and even if it's on the beers too because we still explain the beers because a lot of people just ask well is it an IPA is it a Pilsner is it well, they're, going, even they're going after what's the your name yeah, it's a, <laughs> what's your yeah, hobbyist right. they go after the name or the style yeah. they don't care about how it's made or what ingredients are in it mm -hmm. but I make it a point to educate them on the beers mm -hmm. and tell them where it's from how they're making it how you know what they're doing and then all of a sudden it's like this light bulb you see it go off and then they start asking questions and yeah. that's what we want because even for the brewers they're in the same boat as the cider makers they want people to understand and appreciate what they're actually making. Right, the educational so, piece the educational is so, part. Piece, so important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how did this bubble about here? How, how did Cider Junction come to be? Uh, and let, let's it, kind of back up just a little bit. You just opened. Yes. Yes. This fall, Not we're in 2017. Not yeah, even. Yeah. We're we're in October um, 7th. November right now. Third. October. Yeah. yeah. We all, we all, October 7th is October when we October 7th, right. Yes. I remember meeting you at the Chicago Cider yes. Summit, <laughs> yes. um, which was in February of 2017. And, yep. you know, I, I felt like you're like buzzing around, just waiting to open the door. So first I want to say congratulations. Thank, thank you. It, this is huge. <laughs> thank you. It really is. It's really huge and exciting. Yeah. And you got here. I mean, what? where did this come from? What this vision to do this? I mean, Willow... Willow Glennon is a cool place. Uh -huh. I get that. And obviously the history's here. But what, what's your history to it all in connection? It, it really started, we wanted to do something that was originally wine related. Like Tracy has been making wine at home, so we wanted to go down that path. You're in California, you think, oh, well, let's do something with wine. And then I went on a trip to the UK and I drank cider. And from that on, I basically, we looked at, like, what can we get it here in the U.S.? So we got the first, you know, like, the commercially available ciders, and they were decent enough. And then we looked at, into, like, well, how is cider made? And we realized it's made like wine. And that basically took us down the path, like, looking into, like, how long does it take to make it? And so at first we wanted to actually make cider. I took Peter Mitchell's cider making class. Okay. And because Tracy already had the background from the wine making, so mm -hmm. kind of, like, even footing and that's when we we looked that we went to various trips to like Portland Seattle just trying all different kinds of ciders and in the end we figured you know what the ciders that we're making 
you can drink them, but what we get like from every place else is is so much better, and we have so much more fun trying other people's ciders that we wanted to actually bring that. And then on top of that, I think well, even before we took the cider coin class, like open, there was one that said open a cider bar instead of making cider yes, at CiderCon. Just- uh, yeah, and it was, recently. I mean, even before that, we had already decided, yeah. you know what, we want to do something like they have That in just Portland. happened this year, though, yes. with Maddie Beeson. And but that was, I mean, that was just coincident. It just confirmed okay. that, I mean, we already had the lease right, signed when right. we went to CiderCon in February. Right, right. So we were already down that path, but it, just, but it confirmed. It like, confirmed yep. the right path for us to choose. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And I just, for the listeners to, to kind of catch up with us, we're talking about a workshop that was held at the 2017 CiderCon in Chicago. And it was all about the idea that, okay, you can keep on opening up the cidery, but what we really need are cider bars. Yeah, correct. And what I think is unique is when you go overseas, there's no cider bars. It's really only in the U.S. that you have. I mean, it's it's happening more. You know, you have the stable and whatnot in the U.K. and different places. So I shouldn't say that, but in the U.S. you're getting this cool focus specifically on cider Mm -hmm. bars. So you you had this idea was that like uh, two years ago because you were in That's on it when i met you almost three, years, almost three, years, three years, years ago yes, three, three years, years ago. ago that we started yeah. yeah yeah looking into like at first it was still going down the path of making cider and then about two years ago is when we looked at yeah let's go the retail route and because we had visited you know like bushwhacker in in portland and portland right. cider the tasting room and so on and how much fun we had just being there in that whole environment. Mm-hmm. And so that's when we decided, yep, switching to the retail route and really focusing on the story behind the craft maker, behind mm-hmm. the, the craft cider maker. And that's what we have in, in, as part of our preparation for opening this. We call them little business trips, but really it was like visiting all the various cider makers that are yeah, within like a day's, two days drive and actually of course, tasting the array of their ciders, getting their stories, how are they making ciders, and so that we can be kind of like, I see it almost like as an extension, like a, as a tasting room, because they might not have one, but in, in a lot of cases, they don't have a tasting room, and they're struggling with getting their ciders either on the shelves, in supermarkets, or liquor stores, or I mean, never mind tap handles in restaurants, restaurants. it's a struggle. Yeah. Right. And so we wanted to showcase that because we just love the stories behind it and the products and the variety, really. And it's wow. so far, it's been proven pretty well. And it's, yeah, it was something that we, we even travel, when we travel to Europe on a trip, you know, we, it was always, we always look for cider. Mm-hmm. So we're always looking to talk with somebody. So we had, you know, made a trip to Frankfurt in Germany to go to Postman as well. So it, right. for us to go back to why we did it, well, it just... We want to be that extension of their story. Yeah. And we can tell their story. We want to know their story. And we want to educate people on why they're even doing it and getting their ciders. Our vision from day one, and it's even in our logo, is we want to bring ciders in from around the world. You know, we, we want to give people that experience. It's all about the experience that they can have when they come here and they can taste and see the ciders that we have. And it's... Some people may never get the chance to visit these different cideries or these cider makers and ever taste their product. Like Claudia said, they have a hard time getting stuff on the shelves um, when there's that much competition from, you know, big corporations and and the beer market and so forth. So people like us give them that avenue. We give them that vessel in order to get their products to the consumer. And that's our vision is to bring them in from around the world. And so we do have European ciders. We do have ciders from other states. um, And we want to just continue to expand on that. And the the other facet of that is, too, I mean, this is the melting pot of California here. So we have Brits coming in, Germans coming in, French coming in. So that is a draw for them as well to see, it's like, wow, you actually have ciders from France. And then, of course, the third angle is to showcase, like, what is cider from around the world? What does it mean? Because what you see here in California, I mean, yes, there are some that are made from cider apples, heirloom apples, but there's a lot that are made from dessert apples and they're flavorful and fun, kind of like almost like Mm -hmm. craft beer angle type approach. But like, what is the traditional way? What is the traditional cider? And it's like, it is more for the either the individual who has already tasted ciders and they are looking like, okay, like, 
the approach like the Spanish side or um, it, it, it like sometimes we caveat a little bit or the one French side that we currently have on tab we caveat it's like either you will like it or not because this is a very earthy cider which, for one, example, which one do you have on tap from the number 24 the 24 oh yeah okay Cedar great. De, de Fresne. Yep. Approved. and so but it's yeah. it's really showcasing like what is yeah. out there and, and then tying it a little bit into the history too. It's like nice. like we said, it's like you cannot yeah. overload people with information even though we could just talk cider all day long and all night long. <laughs> We'd lose them at some point. I, like, yeah. I, like, I know I that feeling. I know like, that feeling. Yeah. So how many cider geeks do you have coming in here? You say it's a melting pot and it's you know, yeah. the Silicon Valley, this whole region. It's like I said, I, we, we knew there were, there were cider lovers. Yeah. We, we knew there were, you know, kind of the closeted cider lover, you know, <laughs> you know, they're there. And it wasn't until they, they heard from social media that we were coming. And then all of a sudden she started getting feedback from people, which we Excellent. expected to get, but it wasn't until we opened. And now that we've been open and mind you, we've only been open. This is only the fourth Saturday. So for us, it's been amazing to see how many people who love cider. And it's been amazing to see those who've never tried it at all yeah. and they want to come in and they want to try it because there's so many and they just hear from friends or family yeah, members. It's perfect timing. Um, yeah. It's perfect timing for them. Yeah. And they're like, I've got to try this. And it's not until they do try it that they are like, wow, this is mm -hmm. something different, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we had an inkling that there were cider lovers here because one, you have Cider Summit San Francisco. Yeah. That this is now its fourth or fifth year, mm -hmm. and it has grown. And then we also participated now two years in a row. This year we actually sponsored it. Last year we just had a small ad, and they had the cider walk. So it was here cider in cider walk. A walk, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's mm. last year it was in Santana Row. This year here actually in Willow Glen on on Main Street on Lincoln Avenue. It's um, it's about seven eight hundred people. Like you buy tickets and you go into the various stores where they actually pour cider. So like from that we knew that there was an interest. And what, and what would they be pouring on those walks? Like would it be your classic where you could get anywhere in the U.S. kind of cider? Well, I, I think last year it was yes, it was like what was commercially like readily available. This year they actually reached out to us and asked us like do you have any other more local cideries that we don't know about that might want to participate so wow. they actually showcased more of the local California ciders this That's year. fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we knew that there was an interest even if it was just for the novelty factor but yeah I mean the, the response from people who love cider has been great so far. Mm. Yeah. I, well, I mean this is really recent so you're not even like a month Yes. Open. <laughs> yes. So I'll be, I'll be really curious, you know, kind of catching up with you as time goes on, because I can imagine the space, you know, all of a sudden you need to open up another spot with the, the growth insider in yeah. California is really something to be watching. Yes. Yes. And I don't think folks realize the, the kind of like boomtown scene that's happening with cider in, in Northern Cal and even in Southern Cal, where, you know, there isn't really those kind of apples. Yeah. growing at the same rate that you have up here. When we started out, the list, you have the list here in front of you, the mm -hmm. 26 tap handles of cider. And I think only, what was it? We had three international, no, five from the UK, France, and Spain to start with, and two from Oregon. So that's nine. So that mm -hmm. means like two thirds or so were California ciders when we started mm -hmm. out. And now we're rotating through. We have like about maybe a third that we kind of keep repeating or bringing in a new variety of the mm -hmm. same cidery. But people were really amazed to see that these are really all California ciders. So yeah. right. They don't, don't realize how many cideries and cider makers are in yeah. California. Yeah, you think yeah. wine with cider mm -hmm. yes. you know, with yeah. California in that way. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so in this short amount of time that you've been, you know, kicking butt out here in San Jose and like <laughs> letting everybody all those uh, kind of, you know, backyard cider fans uh, finally have their day. What are you noticing that people are going for? Is it classically the, the sweeter or, or is it kind of hard to touch down on that yet? Um, it's kind of hard to touch down. I mean, we do offer flights. So by us offering flights, um, it enables them because we do carry so many ciders. So it enables them to have a chance to get a, a taste of um, 
of each one that they might like based off a description or any sort of verbiage that we've been able to relay back to them. Mm -hmm. um, but it's they're all it's all over the board. It, we don't mm -hmm. believe it or not with these cider makers. There's not something that's so terribly sweet, <laughs> and so people are like, "That's all I've ever had. I've only had sweet, 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 sweet." But then they start tasting these others, and with all within the first flight, they've all of, all of a sudden started to get away from what they thought was sweet that they loved to a little bit more, more of a traditional drier, yes. you know, it's maybe less fruity it makes me so happy. cider. Yes, it's, yeah. it's definitely yeah. in that direction. I mean, yes, we have, I, I don't want to yeah, pin down a number if it's like half, half or so, yeah. but like when, usually when people come in, they're overwhelmed by the variety. So they ask like, well, do you have any recommendations? And then now our question is, well, do you like, what have you tasted so far? Mm -hmm. Was there a cider that you liked? Even if it's the commercially big, big name mm -hmm, brands, mm -hmm. just for, to give us a direction, like where can we guide them to? And then there are some who just quickly say, I only like sweet ciders, and we might have like four or five that we might consider sweeter, but they're really not as sweet as anything that's as commercially available, like in grand scale. And I would say at least half are saying, I like dry ciders. Yes. So it's definitely going in that direction. I like and, hearing that yeah. a lot. Yes. Because yep. that's tells you about that educational piece, that palette. And yeah. it's and that's one of the things that we try to educate them on too, is just because they see, like I, I had a gentleman ask me to say, oh, this is fruit, 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 fruit. It's super sweet. Is it super, you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. no. I mm -hmm. said, so there's that educational part coming back mm -hmm. again, where just because there's fruit involved in the cider doesn't mean that it's something super sweet and sugary. Yeah. It just isn't that way with its craft ciders. Mm -hmm. So, but they might love that fruit, you know, just a strawberry, a blueberry, a blackberry. Right. And, and then they can get a little bit of that taste when they drink that cider. Yeah. So, so uh, again, for folks out there in Ciderville, we're sitting at this little table here. I have the nose here, Tracy and Claudia, and we're looking at this, the, the menu of ciders. And they have it listed with the name, the style, then the um, uh, alcohol by volume or ABV. Um, no IBUs here because it's uh, well, it's not a hop cider for one, and there's it's not a beer, and then and then the price for each. Then we look up on the the a nice bar here is probably like a like a 20 foot long bar, uh, yep. and all the taps a really nice um, display, and then a pie or there is um, what do you call this like kind of the, a the digital menu. menu board. Digital yeah. menu board, yeah. of course. That's that's perfect. Uh, digital menu board of everything uh, that is available here and then there's a cooler with all the the bottles uh, directly across from the entrance and then above the entrance are the different posters one that says harvesting and there are these beautiful sketches some of you must have had somebody do that yes, for you yeah. yes harvesting pressing fermenting aging and enjoying and that's that additional educational piece there you know you you're hitting it on all different levels here and really oh oh i want to see i see an apple picker too one of those high <laughs> uh so there's a cider junction piece there um uh you know with the logo and then a long pole for those hard to reach apples or pears. We, we actually still have to finish some of the decorating. We actually have an orchard ladder that's 11 feet long, like one of these old wooden yeah. orchard ladders and an apple picker bag, a yeah. harvest bag. So yes, there, there is still a couple little things that just mm -hmm. got left behind in the garage. I haven't had time to really put up yet, you know, as far as the rest of, of the course. door. You're, you're, you're moving 100 miles an hour. Oh. I, which, I really appreciate that, you know, you gave us the time today. You know, you have this kind of feel like, I feel like I'm kind of like in an apple uh, barn a little bit with the, the boards over there. Very welcoming, really nice setup. Thank you. Right, yes. right. So easily accessible. So getting here too, like from the San Jose airport is a stone's throw away, right? I mean, yeah, pretty yes. much. We've got about 10 minutes or something like that? 87, yeah, probably yeah, 10, probably 12 10 minutes, minutes. 10 or 12 minutes. 10 yeah. or 12 minutes, and then San Francisco is a little bit further north. Um, maybe an hour from yeah, here? Yeah, an hour 15, Good probably, 15. to get to San Francisco. Yeah. Now, there is a, a cider bar up in San Francisco, there, up, up Cider? Up Cider, yes. Right? And there are, along the way, so here in Silicon Valley, you have up in Santa Clara, you have Rabbit's Foot Meadery and Red Branch Cider. 
um, and they have been here for over 20 plus years making meads first and now mm -hmm. ciders right and we they have a that. tasting yep. room but down here in the south mm -hmm. bay as we refer to it that is really the only place right now besides us where you can taste um, ciders and of course they are making it so there they have an array of what they what they make what they make right. mm -hmm. And then further up the peninsula, there are a couple um, cideries. There is the South City cider. There is um, Redwood Coast cider, but they don't. Well, Redwood Coast cider has a um, tasting room, but South City does not yet have one. And then on the East Bay, you have to go all the way up to Oakland to go to Crooked City cider to find mm -hmm. the tasting room. But mm -hmm. in terms of like this geographically here in the South yeah. Bay, this is it. Yes. And then you have to go yeah either further north or south. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to find the ciders. And, and then, so really, a, for California, which is a huge state, you have only three dedicated cider bars. Yes. And you have the, your cider bar, mm -hmm. Cider Junction, and then Up Cider, and then down in Long Beach. Great so the Great Society. Society. Yeah, Cider. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty impressive still. I mean, for a huge state to have three cider bars, it that, again, is showing you, like, when people think about cider, they should really be thinking about California at this mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a, a growing market yes. for sure. You know, when you have the quality of winemakers that you do have yeah. in this state, and you couple that with this expansion into the orchard, what are you seeing in your travels and, and while you're building this plan? Um, are you seeing folks? more cideries opening or people is there like um, I don't know clubs like from fermenta fermenter clubs or anything like that are, are you seeing I, uh, people planting cider apples I think or, it's a yeah a combination so the ones that are here in the Bay Area they started I always think out of a similar passion as us and they were not um, farm based I mean they buy the apples or press them or buy the apple juice right um, but then there's the other track where they buy the plot and and plant the cider apples and I think so that's you are a, seeing and that. there is a it, there is a growth for orchardists um, that were traditionally doing they're still doing it because they're family farms and so yeah. forth um, where they'll they're sending their apples to the market and they're the eating apples um, right. the dessert apples but there is a trend that you do see where they are starting to kind of corner off these small plots of land to plant cider apples. Yes. They, they that, know yeah. about the yeah. cider movement yeah. and they, they you know, there's a big, huge request for, for, you know, these apples and they're seeing the demand more and more and so now they're starting to, to do that, to plant yeah. them. Mm -hmm. You know, it just takes but, a couple of years, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, they're starting to do it now. But in terms so. of the actual, yeah, cider makers, it's a combination. Like there are yeah. some orchard based, a lot that are just try starting out in their garage initially, and then move into a bigger industrial space. Classic. And, and then classic. exactly, yep. and then there yep. are some like especially further south, Paso and Paso Robles, where you have the winemakers that are now starting to make cider as well and have been mm -hmm. really successful with their productions. Mm -hmm. Even brewers, beer brewers, are getting in on it as well because they. You know, they want they do collaborations or they do something different, and that's you know that's always been like the craft scene. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're able to play with different things, mm -hmm. um, and nobody frowns upon that. They, everybody loves something different. You know, mm -hmm. instead of just the normal traditional styles, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's beer, cider, wine, so forth. Mm -hmm. But everybody's starting to get in on it, where they can kind of do these craft beverages. Mm -hmm. so. so with that that piece, just since you mentioned the craft beer. I'm not seeing any hop cider. Oh yeah, you do yes, have. You have do. the Golden State yeah. Mighty Hops and number six or seven. One of them, yeah. yeah number the five, South City. South City. All that's the good the hop names one. were already taken. Oh, the good hop <laughs> names were uh, all South good, City. Yeah. All the good hop <laughs> names were taken. Wow, that's really cute. Oh, you got you know that's a great part about I think yeah, when we started out I think we actually had four or five hop ciders well even two towns hop and stocks so okay. oh yeah, yeah. it's so a rhubarb yeah, a and hop cider yes yeah, right that's really popular folks coming in do they actually sometimes go right for do you have any hop ciders yes 
we do get people who come in and they want the hop ciders and That's they will it. literally ask for it. They won't even bother doing a flight at that point. They will come yeah. in and say, oh, no, I'll just take a glass of this one. I'll take a glass of this number. And wow. they know exactly what they want. Wow. Um, believe it or not, the Mighty Hops, the Golden State Mighty Hops is really popular. Yeah. Um, so they'll ask for that one by glass. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Do you think that's because the cideries are doing a good job of promoting? or wh wh Where's the buzz, the information links around here? Where are people finding out about it? I think it's like definitely for that one, it's the marketing. It's the marketing. Because mm. they are one of the ciders that is available in cans. Mm -hmm. um, and they do great marketing. But it's... It's a matter of trying. Uh, I hear it a lot where people will say, oh, I've had this at this place, or yeah. I've had it here, or like they've been able to buy it in cans mm -hmm. because they've been able to get it in Whole Foods yeah. or somewhere. Right. And they know what they like already. Partially um, it's us too. But it's partially, so you it's, try it's, partially, it's, <laughs> partially it's us too, and because we'll ask those questions and right. educate them, and then they, right. you know maybe they didn't like hot cider until they actually, because they, they kind of get that notion that it's going to be like a beer and it's going to be super hoppy but then I go into the whole background of how the hops are actually added to cider versus how they're actually uh, fermented with the with the beer and they like that correlation because they're like well oh wow and so then they start to do the wine thing where there's you know they get the aroma first mm -hmm. you know and that aroma initially is how you kind of like your flavors you know yeah. that gives you a really good indication of what you're going to like yeah. but they taste it and then they're just like wow this is great mm -hmm. you know so, so i'm wondering what are you two drinking in your glasses what is in your glass <laughs> <laughs> right now i actually have the gowans um gravenstein okay which yeah. is a single varietal and they make the cider up well they have their own apple orchards 130 acres up in mendocino county and they have been growing over 80 varietals of, of apples. And so this one is a little bit back sweet and so a little bit more on the sweet side, but um, I love every cider that they, they make. That they yeah. make. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very and traditional style. So. Is that what you're also And drinking? that's what I'm also drinking. You had yeah. the 1876. Oh, did you give me? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, all, we're all drinking that, that yeah. from that cidery. Yeah. Not, not that we don't like all these other cideries no. that are on here, <laughs> mind you. It's just that... I haven't really had any other cider, so this is a, a great opportunity to do that. Let's talk a little bit more about the menu, because we kind of uh -huh. started there talking about a little bit of food pairing, and then Noah's brought that up. But um, you have a small plate salad and then some sliders, small plates like a charcuterie board, a cheese board, mixed cheese and charcuterie, and then two nice salads, some pulled pork sliders and flatbreads, uh, a nice complete little menu of perfect amount for a cider bar. The pulled pork sliders, I actually tried them up in Chicago at CiderCon at one of the, it wasn't actually a cider bar, but, but there was a cider event where they specifically put pulled pork sliders on the menu. Mm. And so what we offer, we offer it with um, a, a cider based uh, Carolina style mustard sauce mm. and with an apple slaw. So there's always, what mm. we try to have is either an apple on it or it goes well with the cider or it's cider infused. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there was a lot of that we gleaned from like this went well when we tried it at other cider bars. And so we put this initial menu together and then we hired um, a chef. And so he is cooking based off our menu, but now we are mm -hmm. kind of adding on over the next couple of weeks um, with his input and even our staff have been mm -hmm. providing input. Mm -hmm. um, what we are fo focusing on now is the, the gluten-free and vegan aspect. Um, so specifically looking at what can we add that's gluten-free that's and, and vegan um, to appeal to a wider well, request really that has come in because obviously cider is gluten-free. So mm -hmm. there have been more individuals coming in requesting gluten-free um, food yeah. options. What are your, your hours? Let's talk about that for people coming here. Like if your kitchen hours, is it from the, the get-go that you're doing? And I know this is going to be changing too over time. So... So, we'll hold you to this. So yeah, so I mean, we're, we're because we are technically a restaurant, so you're you're technically supposed to have your kitchen open about a half hour before closing time. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. our kitchen is open that late. So mm -hmm. we're open seven days a week. Um, wow. Monday through Friday, we open at 4 p.m. We don't open for any sort of lunch or brunch hour, mm -hmm. um, but we do 
you know, late afternoon, early dinner type crowds uh, during the week. And then on the weekends, we open at 11 a.m. Uh, so we're up until midnight on Saturdays and then 8 p.m. on Sundays, mm -hmm. uh, which is a good hour for Willow Glen. Um, it's, people have commented about the hours. They said that they like the fact that we're open, you know, the hours that we are. Um, it enables them to get other things done, uh, especially with a lot of families here. So they have kids. Um, they're really excited, the fact that they can even bring their kids um, to our establishment mm -hmm. now. Um, so that's a very appealing to them as well. Yeah. well so. Can you say more about that? Is that because they wouldn't be able to go to a typical craft beer bar? Or? Yeah, it's I correct. mean, exactly. A Most side of bar would have been 21, 21 and, and over. over. Yeah. So oh, but because you are a, a bistro. Because we're a bistro. Right, right, you get to do that. The yeah. kids can come. And we will appeal to the dog walkers. There's a lot of individuals here, yeah. <laughs> residents who, yeah. who have dogs who are walking past us. And so we are expanding and we're building a patio that will add another 25 seats. And so that will, of course, allow that you can bring your doggy in. The doggy doesn't have to be tied up looking in from the outside, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which is what happens right oh, now. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's going to change really quickly. Yeah. And do you expect, when do you expect to start breaking ground on that piece there? Hopefully within the next, what, two months? Hopefully within wow. the next yes. two months, yeah. So within a year's time, a lot is, is changing, changing at Cider already. Junction. Yes. yes. Yeah. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about the name Cider Junction? So cute. So, the short so this, I'll try to give you the, oh, the, try to give you the short oh, no. version of this. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's a great story. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, we were trying to come up with a name um, for our place, and we were having some problems. You know, we kept going back and forth, like norm, you know, people do. And so I had a dream, and in this dream, wow. I saw train tracks. I saw a train. I. Uh, saw signs, crossing signs, just a bunch of stuff re revolving around trains. And I will, mind you, that has nothing to do with and cider. And it has nothing to do with <laughs> cider, right? So I had told her about this. I said, hey, you know, and she's like, well, write it down, write it down, write it down. So I wrote it down. I was drawing pictures. And we still toyed with other names and so forth. Um, and it's an interesting thing. We came up, we decided to come up with a name, and she, you know, she did the same thing. She kind of researched based off of the dream. And we came up with the name, and we kind of agreed. We wanted something catchy, you know. You're always looking for something catchy when you're opening a business, right? Yeah. So we came up with this catchy name. And focusing on like focusing kind of like on the old and uh, the new. I'm from Germany, so we kind of took the angle. Okay, I was like I'm a, like a old and new world, yeah, yeah, and kind of like Fine. that whole you know, it's a junction. So we were like, oh, it's kind of, kind of where you the crossroads. Everybody's meeting at the crossroads. Every you know, yeah. everybody's gathering at the cross. You know, that kind of aspect yeah. or angle for it. And some things happen, locations and so forth, and we landed here in Willow Glen, and. It basically, it's interesting because we are actually right here parallel with an old railroad that we had no idea <laughs> ran through Willow Glen. Do, 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 and we're do, right do. on this corner. I mean, literally, so if literally, you look at the window, they're actually repurposing the old tra um, train tracks into a trail. Oh, and right where the fence is? Yes, correct. yes, and yes. so it ran literally right past right this past building. Us. There's it's still right an here. easement on this property, which yeah. is delaying the patio, too, this right now. This was meant to be. <laughs> and it was me and it, that's how wow. we saw it. So we did research. Of course, she did all. She loves to research. So she was on the computer right away trying to feel, oh, my God, we're at the Cider Junction, and we're at this, <laughs> this intersection that used to be an old, it used to be the old Western Pacific Railway, and it ran from downtown to Los Gatos, and... It traveled people for a while and then also packaged goods and so forth back and forth. Yeah. And then she just said, oh, my gosh, it was meant to be that we were here. But it's, it's I mean, so, we didn't want yeah, to bring are. really too much of that here inside. I mean, we, yeah. like you commented on what we have inside. It's kind of the rustic industrial approach mm -hmm. and, like, we have to reclaim wood. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yes, the barn style that mm -hmm. we wanted to replicate. But the... the the railroad angle is just kind of a fun little add-on. Yeah, that's a little bit of your own history. It's there a little bit of history right there that we, yeah. And now you'll be able to ride a bike here. Yes. 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 Probably next summer. Yes, you, you should know, be, be, I think, from downtown San downtown. Jose and also oh. from further south. Yes. Wow, that that's really, really nice. I always like yeah. being able to ride my bikes, too. Yeah. I know. Different it's, junctions <laughs> to get cider. Yeah, it's about a mile and a half down 
to downtown right, there, right. about a mile and a half to two miles. And you have a little bit of swag there. Drink your one apple a day. Yes. yes. And right in the front of the shirt. Yeah, I like that. We we are well, I like to consume our apples that way. <laughs> <laughs> in many ways, to consume an apple, but it's a nice way to do that. It certainly makes it easy, thanks yeah. to the cider makers. Well, this has been absolutely delightful. Yes, thank you mm. so much for coming in. Yes. Thank you very much. It's and been a for, pleasure for to highlighting talk to you. all the various cider makers. I mean, I've been listening to so many podcasts. I told mm. Tracy, "Say, you have to listen. You have to start listening to these." Mm. And it's fun. I mean, we incorporate or we, we glean from it too as we travel to the different cideries and, and talk to the different cider makers. So that's it's awesome. been helpful in our preparation as well. Good. Thank well, you. That that's all part of it. You know, we're all trying to just keep on having cider. You know moving forward going and getting that educational yeah. and going up. I'd like to, you know, just really raise our glasses here and just say yes. cheers, cheers to cheers. the cheers. future. Are you headed to San Jose? Do you want to stop at the Cider Junction? Well, download the free app called Digital Pour to get the newest and most up-to-date list of their taps. Some of the upcoming kegs that they're going to be having is a gin barrel aged from the Golden State Cider Company and an Imperial Macintosh Cider from Humboldt Cider. That is an 8.5% and it is their 2017 single varietal Macintosh with a twist, of course, (laughs) because it's from Humboldt. They partially focused this batch to concentrate the sugars before fermentation. Hmm. It makes for a richer and more robust flavor in addition to a higher percentage of alcohol. That's a special release and only a one keg per customer. And the Cider Junction has one. And also there is the Man Go Go, <laughs> which is a mango habanero cider from Two Towns Cider. Some of the other news from the Cider Junction is that they're going to have their first Meet the Maker Tap Takeover with 101 Cider this coming Friday on December 15th. And they're going to have three of their sample ciders and two special releases. So check that out. And they're also going to have other events planned for January, plus a cider launch event for a cider company that is launching their product in California. That'll be interesting. And a meet the women cider makers for late January and February. And also, I mean, that's not all. This cider junction is happening. Also on the horizon is a cheese pairing event, cider appreciation class, and paint night, just to name a few. Oh boy. Well, they got it going on at the Cider Junction, and I know myself and the nose had a lovely time hanging out with both Claudia Derp and Tracy Smith and getting to know them. If you want to find all this information that I just talked about, go to the show notes for this episode number 107 and find out the hours and location and phone number for the Cider Junction in San Jose, California. I don't mean to do information overload because this chat really brought it on. But did you know that there is something called the Totally Cider Tour headed to the UK this coming April? Actually, April 25th through May 2nd. And I'll be on that tour too. We're going to be hitting amazing cideries, feasting on cider, and enjoying the local folks and the local flavors. Don't delay. Sign up today by going to totallycider.com. A big tip of the glass to the patrons of Cider Chat and the following commercial cideries. Current Cider of Pennsylvania, Big Fish Cider Company of Virginia, and Ramborn Cider Company in Luxembourg. Make sure to ask for those ciders and a list of other ciders at the Cider Chat Going Up campaign page whenever you are out and about. Because by supporting them, you in turn are helping to support Cider Chat and helping to keep cider going up around the world. Join now at the Cider Chat Patreon page. There will be a link in the show notes.
Well, I hope wherever you are in Ciderville that the season is treating you right. I will be looking forward to speaking to you again next week as we have another great chat rolling in. In the meanwhile, this is Rio Wind Caller signing off for now. Looking forward to seeing you in Ciderville. Yeehaw!